the Mary Rose and South Sea Castle. This is South Sea Castle in Portsmouth. The use of powerful cannons have brought in a different kind of fighting. King Henry ordered the English coast to be defended by castles of a new kind, like this one at South Sea. The walls are lower to give a smaller target. They are also thick and angled so that cannonballs would bounce off and do no damage. This castle is a platform for powerful guns that can fire out to sea at enemy ships coming to attack Portsmouth Harbour. It was the 19th of July 1545. King Henry VIII was standing here at South Sea, anxiously watching a great sea battle being fought in the waters of the Solent. The French fleet were attacking with 128 ships. The English fleet of just 80 ships were sailing out to fight them off. The French had already landed soldiers to attack the Isle of Wight and now they were threatening Henry's main naval base at Portsmouth. The flagship of the English fleet was the warship Henry Grace Adieu, but King Henry's favourite ship was the Mary Rose, sailed by Vice Admiral George Carew. The Mary Rose had been built 34 years ago, when King Henry was a young king and it had served him well, fighting in many battles. French galleys rode up to the English fleet, threatening them with their big cannons. The Mary Rose turned so that it could fight back with the cannons in her stern, while presenting a smaller profile to the French guns. The Mary Rose tipped over as she turned and, while King Henry watched in horror, she sank to the bottom of the sea. It was a terrible disaster, but when, more recently, the wreck was discovered, raised and preserved, it was a wonderful time capsule. Today we can see one of the very first purpose-built warships of the Royal Navy, and at the same time we can find out about life in Tudor, England. Why did the Mary Rose sink? One reason was that extra cannons and additions to the ship had made it much heavier. Now the ship was floating deeper in the water and the open gun ports were not far above the waterline. Another reason was that the additions had made her top heavy and more likely to tip over. When the ship made its sudden turn in battle, it seemed that she tipped too far and water flooded into the open gun ports, making her sink. Even then, a well-trained captain and crew could have quickly dropped sails which would have righted the ship. The trouble was that both the master and the crew were new. They were not used to working with either the ship or each other. Trapped under the boarding nets and below decks, most of them were drowned. What was so special about the Mary Rose? In the past, sea battles were just land battles fought on water. Ships would try to tie themselves to enemy ships so that the soldiers could board and fight just as they would on the land. There were no purpose-built warships. Merchant ships were hired and fitted with raised platforms at the bow and the stern. Just as on land, so at sea, the use of powerful cannons had now brought in a different kind of fighting. The Mary Rose was one of the first of a new kind of warship. It was a floating gun battery that could destroy enemy ships at a distance. This was a new way of fighting at sea and it needed purpose-built warships, manned by trained and experienced professionals. 
The sides of the Mary Rose bristled with powerful cannons of all shapes and sizes. Some were made of bronze and others of iron. Under the Tudors, these were now being made in England for the first time. Every gun was different, and gunners had to carefully check each cannonball before loading it to make sure that it was the right size. The guns from the wreck of the Mary Rose were all found to be still loaded with powder and ball. It seems that the Mary Rose had sunk without firing a shot. The ship also had many archers armed with longbows. These were expert bowmen and they needed a great deal of strength. Their skeleton showed how they had developed powerful right arms from constantly practicing with their bows. The shipwreck is like a Tudor time capsule. All kinds of objects tell us about life on board. There are the tools of the ship's carpenter, the potions and tools of the ship's surgeon, all kinds of clothes, leather shoes, the navigational instruments of the ship's master, musical instruments, rosaries and prayer books of the priest and crew, and even the ship's dog. King Henry VIII founded a professional Royal Navy equipped with purpose-built warships. He also provided it with a fortified naval base at Portsmouth that is still its home today. <laughs>